Welcome to another time of worship and the word at Deerfield United Methodist Church, where we are called to love Jesus and love others. My name is Joanna Besky and I am the pastor here. Our call to worship today, we gather together to worship the one who created us, the one who calls us, the one who equips us, the one who loves us without end. With joyful hearts, let us worship God. Now, let us worship him in song uh, with the praise chorus, Tis So Sweet. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know the saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more Oh how sweet to trust in Jesus just to trust his cleansing blood and in simple faith to plunge me neath the Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. First Chronicles 28, 1 through 10. David summoned all the officials of Israel to assemble at Jerusalem. The officers over the tribes, the commanders of the divisions of the, in the service of the king, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, the officials in charge of all the property and livestock belonging to the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the warriors, and all the brave fighting men. King David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my fellow Israelites, my people. I had it in my heart to build a house as a place for the rest of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, for a footstool for, of our God, and I made plans to build it. But God said to me, You are not to build a house for, for my name, because you are a warrior and have shed blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, chose me, my whole family, to be king over Israel forever. He chose Judah as leader, and from the tribe of Judah, he chose my family. From my father's son, he was pleased to make me king over all Israel. 
of, of all of my sons, and the Lord has given me many, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, Solomon, your son, is the one who will build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever if he is unswerving and carrying out my commands and laws as is being done at this time. So now I charge you in sight of all Israel and the assembly of the Lord and in, and in the hearing of our God, be careful to follow all the commands of your Lord, your God, that you may possess this good land and pass it on as an inheritance to your descendants forever. And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind for the Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you, but if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build, build a house as the sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In my earlier years, I spent several years working at Fox Chase Cancer Center as a hospice chaplain. I considered it a sacred honor to journey with individuals and families in those last weeks and days of their lives. I've witnessed a number of family meetings in which a patient will summon their various family members to their bedside often those closest to them, but also those who perhaps they've been estranged with. Sometimes close friends and others are invited to these times. And with all these people gathered around the bed, the conversation would often start with some variation of, you're probably wondering why I called you all here together today. This was an opportunity for the individual to say some parting words to those they loved most while they still could. Memories would be shared, forgiveness extended, loving words exchanged, and a word of encouragement often for their future. David is now approaching the end of his life. He's had a full and prosperous life filled with victories and defeats, praise and repentance and restoration. Like my hospice patients, David calls all the people together his family and friends, and not just those who are local, but he also summons the officers or the officials in Jerusalem, those presiding over the 12 tribes, the military leaders, those overseeing the property and the uh, livestock, the, those in charge of the army battalions, the palace officials, the warriors, and all the fighting men. And in this vast company, David gives his charge and words of encouragement to his son, Solomon, in front of all these witnesses. He get, begins by saying, listen up, people. Remember back when I had a plan born out of my heart to build a temple for God, a temple he did not ask for, but a temple that would be a place of rest for the Ark of the Covenant and a footstool for our God. Remember when he called me out saying it wasn't mine to build and that I was a warrior with blood on my hands. Yeah, I remember that too. He had not chosen me for that task, David said, but you know what he did do? He chose me out of my whole family to be the king of Israel. Me, the youngest of the brothers. Me, the one who had not trained for battle. Me, the one who sat alone in the fields with the sheep playing my harp writing and singing worship music to the Lord. He chose me to slay Goliath, bring deliverance to the troubled soul of King Saul. And eventually he chose me to succeed Saul as king. And our God declared that the promised Messiah would come from my lineage, from the house and lineage of David. And now here we stand, me in my old age. And once again, he has chosen of all my many sons, Solomon, to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord ruling over Israel. God told me that he had chosen Solomon to build his house and courts and that he would be Solomon's father and Solomon would be his son. 
I imagine that David was beaming with pride as he shared these words. What an honor and a comfort to David in his old age. But there were a few conditions that needed to be spoken up front. The Lord said, I will establish his kingdom if he is unswerving in carrying out my commands and laws as is being done at this time. Well, the first thing that jumps out to me is the encouraging word spoken over David. God is in essence saying, well done, good and faithful servant to David, acknowledging that his commands and laws are currently being carried out and obeyed. High five for David. God is telling Solomon in the presence of all these leaders that this will not be an easy task. He must be undividedly committed and surrendered to God in all he is, does, and says. As king representing the Lord Almighty, Solomon is called to a high standard of obedience. When God speaks, his response needs to be yes and amen. David reiterates this by saying, So now I charge you in the sight of all Israel and the assembly of the Lord, And in the hearing of our God, be careful to follow all the commands of the Lord your God that you may possess the good land and pass it on as an inheritance to your descendants forever. You, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him wholeheartedly with a wholehearted devotion and a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Consider now, the Lord has chosen you to build a house as the sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. I want to focus on this charge in verses 8 to 10, for there's so much we can learn from David's words to his son. David reminds Solomon that he is not alone. All the people assembled there were part of God's plan to accomplish his purpose. That is the purpose of Christian community. God has brought us all together to support and encourage one another as we both individually and as a church press in to God's calling for us. Solomon is charged to acknowledge and serve God with his whole heart and mind. To acknowledge God is not just to say he exists or say his name a few times on a Sunday, but to acknowledge God in all our ways is to know him. It is to recognize that God is the one who works in our lives in power, wisdom, goodness, and justice. It is to align and identify ourselves as his. Part of that is reflected in our serving him with all that we are. Knowingly or unknowingly, we serve something or someone. David is saying, make the decision that in everything you serve God, not serving yourself, your bank account, your friends, serve God and him alone. And it's not about what we accomplish so much as it is about our attitude, our motivation in serving and worshiping him. God is looking inwardly to our hearts and thoughts to find those who are wholly devoted to him with the promise that those who seek him will find him. The section ends with the words, consider now. Don't say, well, I'll decide tomorrow. I'll get to it later or after I finish this or that. God says, consider now because the Lord has chosen you to build a house as a sanctuary. Today, in a time when churches are closing and church buildings are being sold, we are still called to build a house as a sanctuary for our God. It's a community of faith where people encounter the living Christ, a place where God's grace and love are lavished upon people and where we become new creations where his name is lifted up and glorified. We've seen how God called and used David, and now he's passing the baton to David's son, Solomon. Let me ask you, what about you? What is it that God wants you to accomplish? What does he want to accomplish through you? What good works has he created in advance for you to walk in? 
Whose lives does God want to touch through the ministries of Deerfield UMC? Are we willing to follow the Lord's leading in our lives? You see, the living God wants you to know that he loves you and he has chosen you. He chose you because he wanted you. He wanted you to be his. He wanted a friend and a partner. He wanted someone to walk with and share himself with. And that someone is you and me. He chose you because he wanted you. Romans 1, 6 says, And you are among the chosen ones who received the call to belong to Jesus, the anointed one. The fullness of the glory of God's inheritance is you. In fact, you are the hidden treasure in this world. He chose you because you are a pearl of great price. He chose you, chose you because he loved you before time began, before any star was burning or any tree growing or any stream was flowing. He loved you and he carried you in his heart. He gave you a destiny before he created one thing in this universe. You are more important to him than any created thing. So his love for you is paramount. He chose you to show you hope. It is the hope of his calling, his choosing. That hope is that we will one day become like Christ. He called you, he saved you, he loved you so that you would be transformed to become like Jesus. The full revelation of his hope must grow in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. John said that if anyone has this hope in them, they are transformed and changed into Christ's image. The hope of his calling is to experience the fullness of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in you. Imagine God's dream, God's hope that he had in his heart when he called you to believe in Christ. What is his dream? It is to make you and every other believer into the beautiful image of his son. The Father's dream is to fill the earth with people like his Son. Jesus is so loved of the Father, and so are you. God is determined to bring into a discovery of how much you mean to him. The fullness of the glory of God's inheritance is in you. Imagine all that it would mean to discover that the treasures of your relationship with Christ is what God inherits. It takes the spirit of wisdom and revelation to help us in this quest. When you came to know Christ, God inherited the fullness of your worship and your readiness to be filled with Christ. It is true that we have an unbelievable, amazing inheritance in Christ, but how little we understand that God receives his inheritance in our lives. Since he has chosen us, he has also called us to be holy and set apart for, for him. True believers of Jesus want to be set apart for him and to be pure of heart. God chose you so that you would represent him in this world in holiness and purity and light. He called us to live in fellowship with his son God is forever faithful and can be trusted to do this in you and in me, for he has invited us to co-share the life of his son, Jesus, the anointed one, our king. Just think, God wants to walk in friendship and partner with you. He chose you to display his glory. You are his divine poetry. God has chosen you to show the world a unique message that only you can present. Your life, your unique gifts, your passion for God, they bring to the world a poetic expression of God's love. God will use you for his glory as you put him first. You are chosen by God because he wants you. He loved you before time began. He chose you to give you hope. He chose you to represent holiness and truth. He divinely chose you to be the love companion for his son, Jesus Christ. He chose you to set you free. He chose you to display his glory in this world. Let me end with the words that David said to Solomon found in verse 20 of this chapter of 1 Chronicles 28. 
Be strong and courageous. Do the work. Do not fear or be discouraged for the Lord, your God is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work of the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. Be strong and courageous for God has chosen you. Amen. Well, thank you for worshiping with us again. And as always, I encourage you to check out the church website, DeerfieldUMCNJ.org. And there you can find our upcoming events. If you are local and watching this on Sunday, August 21st, tonight we're having a, a Sunday Sunday. So come on out at six o'clock to the church and we'll be uh, having Sundays and a time of fellowship. Other things on the website, you can share a prayer request. We have a team who are praying for you and we would love to pray more specifically. You can also give to the ministry of the church. God bless you. May you go in his peace, knowing that he has chosen you to be his poetic expression in this world. God bless and see you next time. Like the wind, unseen but present, moving and felt. Like the seasons, changing at exactly the right time. Like the pull of gravity that keeps me firmly planted to the ground beneath my feet. Your faithfulness. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Immovable, unshakable. Your love is steadfast and you keep every one of your promises. You will never leave and you never forsake the ones you love. You finish everything you start and never have you spoken a word in vain. As undeniable as the sun, rising day in and day out without fail, and just as certain as the setting of that same sun, you are faithful.